Hey, welcome back. Refining access control in your organization is a key component to securing your system. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this Microsoft 365 certified security administrator associate certification course. After this episode, you will be able to explain the concepts of conditional access, describe conditional access policies Describe the interaction of conditional access policies to federate users and contact Azure AD access reviews as well. And finally, you would be able to describe what is Azure AD security defaults. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's talk about Azure AD identity governance. Identity governance give organizations the ability to do govern the identity lifecycle, govern access lifecycle, and secure privileged access information across employees and business partners and vendors, and across services and applications, both on-premises and in the cloud as well. Specifically, it is intended to help organizations address four key questions. Which user should have access to which resources? What are those users doing with that access? Are there effective organizational controls for managing access and can auditors verify that the controls are working? Let's talk about identity lifecycle first. Identity governance help organizations achieve a balance between productivity and security. How quickly can a person have access to the resources they need and how should their access change over time? Identity lifecycle management is the foundation for identity governance and effective governance at scale requires modernizing the identity lifecycle management infrastructure for applications. For many organizations, identity lifecycle for employees is tied to representation of that users in an HCM system, which is human capital management system. Azure AD Premium automatically maintains user identities for people represented in Workday in both Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. So what is Access Lifecycle going to look like? Organizations need a process to manage access beyond what was initially provisioned for a user when that user's identity was created. Furthermore, enterprise organizations need to be able to scale efficiently to be able to develop and enforce access policy and control on an ongoing basis. Organizations can automate the access lifecycle process through technologies such as dynamic groups, coupled with user provisioning to SaaS apps and apps integrated with SCIM as well. Organizations can also control which guest users have access to an on-premises applications. These access rights can then be regularly reviewed using recurring Azure AD access reviews. The next one is privileged access lifecycle. Historically, privileged access has been described by other vendors as a separate capability from identity governance. Azure AD privileged identity or PIM provides additional controls tailoring to securing access rights for resources across Azure AD, Azure, and other Microsoft online services. The just-in-time access and role change alerting capabilities provided by Azure AD Privileged Identity Management, in addition to multi-factor authentication and conditional access, provide a comprehensive set of governance control to help secure your company's resources. Let's talk about conditional access. Security is a top concern for organizations using the cloud. A key aspect of cloud security is identity and access when it comes to managing your cloud resources. Users can access your organization resources using a variety of devices and apps from anywhere. As a result of this, just focusing on who can access a resource is not sufficient anymore. To master the balance between security and productivity, you also need to factor how a resource is accessed into an access control decision. With Azure Active Directory conditional access, you can address this requirement. Conditional access is a capability of Azure Active Directory. With conditional access, you can implement automated access control decisions for accessing your cloud apps 
that are based on conditions. All right, so let us discuss some of the common access concerns that conditional access can help you with. The first one is sign in risk. Azure AD Identity Protection detects sign in risk. So, how do you restrict access if a detected sign in risk indicates a bad actor? What if you would like to get stronger evidence that a sign in was performed by the legitimate user? And what if your doubts are strong enough to even block specific users from accessing an app? Another scenario is network location. Azure AD is accessible from anywhere. So what if an access attempt is performed from a network location that is not under the control of your IT department? The next scenario would be device management. In Azure AD, users can access cloud apps from broad range of devices including mobile and also personal device. The fourth scenario is client application. Today you have access to many cloud apps using different apps types such as web-based apps, mobile apps or desktop apps. What if an access attempt is performed using a client app type that causes known issues? Now let's talk about conditional access policies. A conditional access policy is a definition of access scenario using a pattern. So when this happens, then do this. Then do this specifies the response of your policy. It is important to note that the objective of conditional access policy is to not grant access to a cloud app. In Azure AD, granting access to cloud apps is subject to user assignments. With a conditional access policy, you control how authorized users can access cloud apps under specific conditions. With Azure AD Conditional Access, you can control how authorized users can access your cloud apps. The objective of Conditional Access Policy is to enforce additional access control on access attempt to a cloud app based on how an access attempt is performed. A policy-based approach to protect access to your cloud app enables you to start drafting the policy requirement for your environment. So now let's understand what is Azure AD Access Reviews. So first, let me show you where you can find access reviews. I'm on my Azure portal. Go to Azure Active Directory. And under Manage, go to Identity Governance. So within Identity Governance, you can create your access reviews. So Azure AD Access Reviews enable organizations to effectively manage group membership access to enterprise applications, and privileged role assignments. With access reviews, you can evaluate guest user access by reviewing their access to applications and membership of groups. And then you can evaluate employees' access to application and group membership with access reviews. And you can collect access review controls into programs that are relevant to your organization to track reviews for compliance or risk-sensitive applications. So let me help you understand when to use access reviews. If you have too many users in privileged role, it's a good idea to check how many users have administrative access and how many of them are global administrators and, and if there are any invited guests or partners that have not been removed after being assigned to an administrative task. Another scenario when you can use access review is when automation is infeasible. You can create rules for dynamic membership on security groups or Office 365 groups. But what if the HR data is not in Azure AD or if users still need to access after leaving the group to train their replacement? And the third use case is when a group is used for a new purpose. If you have a group that is going to be synced to Azure AD, or if you plan to enable application Salesforce for everyone in the sales team group, it would be useful to ask the group owner to review the group membership prior to the group being used in a different risk content. Another scenario is business critical data access. So for certain resources, it, so it might be required to ask people outside of IT to regularly sign out and give a justification on why they need access for auditing purposes. 
The fourth type is to maintain a policies exemption list. In an ideal world, all users would follow the access policies to secure access to your organization resources. However, sometimes there are business cases that require you to make exceptions. Another way you can use access reviews is to ask group owners to confirm they still need guests in their groups. Employee access might be automated with some on-premises IM but not invited guests. If a group gives guest access to business sensitive content, then it's the group's owner's responsibility to confirm the guests still have a legitimate business need for access. The last use case scenario is have reviews recur periodically. You can set up recurring access reviews of users at set frequencies such as weekly, monthly, quarterly or annually and the reviewers will be notified at the start of each review. And reviewers can approve or deny access with a friendly interface and with the help of smart recommendations. Let's talk about Azure AD security defaults. Security default in Azure Active Directory make it easier to be secure and help protect your organization. Security defaults contain pre-configured security settings for common attacks. Microsoft is making security default available to everyone. The goal is to ensure that all organizations have a basic level of security enabled at no extra cost. You turn on security default in the Azure portal. Another interesting thing is you can turn on conditional access on a report-only mode as well. Report-only mode is a new conditional access policy state that allows administrators to evaluate the impact of conditional access policies before enabling them in their environment. So with this view, you would be able to view conditional access policies can be enabled in report-only mode or during sign-in policy in report-only mode are evaluated but not enforced. Customers with the Azure Monitor subscription can monitor the impact of their conditional access policies using the conditional access inside workbook. So what is risk-based conditional access? Organizations with Azure AD P2 licenses can create conditional access policies incorporating Azure AD identity protection risk scenarios into their conditional access policies. These scenarios include user risk and sign-in risk. So what is user risk? So with user risk, Microsoft works with researchers, law enforcement, various security teams at Microsoft and other trusted sources to find leaked users and password pairs. And the user risk policy may be configured and the user risk policy may be configured through conditional access or Azure AD identity protection. And the second type is sign in risk. Most users have a normal behavior that can be tracked. When they fall outside of their norm, it could be risky to allow them to just sign in. You may want to block that user or maybe just ask them to perform multi-factor authentication to prove that they are really who they are, they say they are. A sign-in risk represents the probability that given authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner. Alright, so that concludes the conditional access episode. In the next video, we're going to learn about how to manage device access. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.